cutters and breakers. This is Internet Personality Evangelist with a review sample of the third major mold in Ocular Max's Perfection series, Terra Aegis, a trail breaker type that includes a bevy of accessory options and a whole whack of black plastic. This is a happily sized black four-wheel driving truck with a camper thing in back and many G1 style colors on its paneling. It's got the yellow, orange, red stripe patterns, the white lines, the 4WD logo, and the blue tinted windshields. The part that's kind of weird is where the camper thing is painted in a slightly lighter shade than the black plastic of most of the rest of the vehicle, and man if it isn't the most oddly distracting thing. Other than that, there's chrome in all the right spots, a couple of diamond plate textured stepping panels under the left and right sides of the vehicle, rolling rubberized tires with a whole lot of traction and grip, lovely clear red plastic blocks in the tail lights, and a rather unfortunate split in the rear end due to transformation. Truthfully, I've found it hard to care about this, but it has been a major talking point for months in the greater unofficial trail breaker conversation. So there you go, guys. I took a close-up shot. Scale-wise, he looks absolutely toyetic alongside Backdraft and Sphinx, which means he fits into the general mushy vehicle sizing of your average Masterpiece-style car robots. As for weapon storage, there are a couple of optional shoulder clips that we'll talk about later, except for the part where I mentioned that they can store in this mode and still allow for proper rolling clearance. The chrome missile cannon things can also plug into some square holes atop the camper thing. Shouts out to fans of robots almost in disguise except for giant visible weapons! A majority of the Terra Aegis transformation is in the legs, and when I say legs, I mostly mean the lower legs. The upside of the clever tricks at work here is a great use of outer truck panels to form the silhouette of the limb. The downside of the clever tricks at work here is the very particular and specific order of operations. Like, if you deviate too far from how things are supposed to work, you can really jam or even damage some thin, swiveling components. Be aware that the diamond plate strips only need to rest against the rear panels to hold them in place. There's no click lock, and you might hurt the toy if you keep pushing in anticipation of one. The kneecaps pull a cool jigsaw trick to come together, but I really wish they clicked together more. From the waist up, Terra Aegis is a lot smoother and less tricky to transform. The arms move as fully formed chunks, and the motions to assemble and compress the torso are a breeze. I quite like the way that the hood belly slims up, and if you want Terra Aegis to have more of a paunch, it seems feasible to skip that step. However, at the very end, there's one more rather finicky step in pulling out the hands, and this is entirely because, well, there's no nice way to get a grip on them. The best method I've found is to scrape out an index finger and then pull on it. Given the fact that the aforementioned finger is made out of two thin pieces that are pinned together and onto a knuckle, I worry greatly about the chances of the finger just coming off by itself one day. An unsubstantiated worry as of this recording, but a worry nonetheless. I'm going to start off by taking a look at what I like to call Naked Terra Aegis. This is what he looks like without any extra stuff bolted onto him. He looks a whole lot like the Trailbreaker of the G1 cartoon if that Trailbreaker got a little taller and broader. Terra Aegis is the most handsome of the Trailbreaker genus. While his color layout is pretty well spot on, it brings the massive downside of a whole lot of plainness. The best example is the head sculpt. It looks awesome! The metallic blue optic strip is full of life. The entirely black face set inside of an entirely black helmet is... devouring. I could have done with a dark metallic paint on the rest of this guy's face, if only to do right by its rather lovely sculpt. Anyway, Terra Aegis has a legitimate pile of extra parts. Let's start with the missiles. They can remain attached to his back in their vehicle mode storage position. You can also attach one, or both, to some hinged connections atop the big fellow's collarbones. They slot in rather strangely from the side, but securely. If you want a little more range on their up and down waggle, the back ends of the missiles can be removed. The main reason you do this, though, is to give Terra Aegis a missile hand. His humanoid hand needs to be sucked back into the forearm, an additional block needs to be snapped over top, and the two-thirds missile can then be plugged on. You can do this with both hands, if you want. As for those one-third little chunks of missile you removed, there are some black clasps that can hold onto them which can be plugged into the shoulders. The fit is very tight, yet also somewhat insecure. I find it easy to accidentally pop the clasps out of their shoulder slots, so I usually don't make use of them, because if those things fall down, they're like small parts holding on to small parts. It's like a perfect way to just wreck a Saturday afternoon. Now, the force field generator. This can attach to a cartoon style stock, which can then attach to one of the collar mounting points. It's got a ball joint connection and can totally waggle around. However, there's also a toy style block that can peg into the back of Terra Aegis's neck with another ball joint connection for the generator to attach to and still happily waggle around. 
just behind his head this time. Both options look great, satisfying both major looks. And to complete one of those looks, you can swap out the entire head for a less human, more robotic, entirely G1 toyetic alternate noggin. It looks so good and so weird, and it means Terra Aegis can assume an entirely G1 cartoon or entirely G1 toy style appearance. Or, thanks to the various means of swapping all the parts around, you can make him look like the trailbreaker of your own fuzzy childhood dreams, mixing toy and tune qualities to your heart's content. Unfortunately, after all this chatter, Terra Aegis has got no actual handheld weapon. He's not short on accessories by any means, but I still somehow feel like, I don't know, something's missing. I want him to hold something. Oh, but even then, there's still one more thing in the box, and I, I guess he could hold it. Terra Aegis also includes, finally, the toy-style head for Ocular Max Sphinx. This one's color matched to the darker original release, and is the sculpt I've been waiting for ever since the line launched. It is identical to the Ocular Max Liger head sculpt, and I don't know if that actually needed to be verbally confirmed, but there you go. Terra Aegis has got a neck joint that can look left and right, it can look up and down on a hinge, the base of the neck. The transformation joint, that is, can help him look even more up and down if you want to play with angles a little bit. Uh, there's just no tilt. Um, these little doodly boppers can all move around as they do, like you know, this ball socket joint here. It'll depend on how you have them set up. His shoulders are quite fun. Uh, they can go forwards and backwards, they can go outwards, revealing some stuff here, and then they can butterfly a little bit as well. And uh, he's got a bicep swivel, a single joint on the elbow, but it's cut such that he gets just beyond 90 degrees of bend. You get the broken elbow thing here, I don't, I don't mind it that much, but I know this is a talking point for some folks. Uh, his wrists can rotate left and right if they're pulled out all the way, and uh, there's a little bit of clickiness to this motion as well. As for the finger jointings, uh, they are present, and they are thus. There's a ball socket thumb. And then he's got three fingers that just joint at the knuckle and are otherwise curved. And then his index finger gains one more joint so that it can ostensibly point. It's still kind of curved, though. And this effect, I still go back and forth. I don't think it's great, but in practice, it does look just enough like a pointing finger uh, for me to feel okay when I see it you know, from a proper pointing angle. I don't know. Um, I still feel weird about posable fingers where the fingers are all curled. Uh, and individually jointed. It just feels, I don't know, feels like a half step away from what I want, but a half step too far from what it's doing. Don't know how to put that any better. Uh, he's got a waist swivel and a big old ab joint, and it's you know tight enough to hold his weight when you're using it to have him peer forward. His missile fell off his back because I forgot it was there, and I just grabbed hold of it and squeezed it and knocked it right out of the mounting point. I'm so good at this! His hips are attached to the skirts. Instead of having the skirts jointed individually, they just move with the hips. It's a nice kind of clickety ratchet. Lets him kick quite happily. Uh, the thighs can swivel. And then there's a knee joint here. Doesn't really allow for the full curl. You know, you're better off just using that one hinge and then moving this red bit. Thing is, there's also a transformation joint here that often tends to start going, and I, I feel like this is supposed to stay attached, because um, getting it going starts to pull apart the knee. Be prepared for that to start coming apart. Uh, his ankle. This ankle, I've been doing some floor polish treatments, so you can see it's not going as fast as it used to, but this ankle is super loose out of the package. This one is anything but loose. This thing is super tight. Uh, it's, it's great. Um, this one, it feels like the rivet might have not fired in quite properly, and I tried to punch it in, and that wasn't really doing anything, but, like, the area where it, it moves on, there's a bit of jiggle on that foot, which is not present on this foot. Uh, either way, even with a loose ankle, the small silver lining of this is that it, because there's die cast in it, it just sits flat when I put him down, and I've not had him topple over due to that ankle tilt, uh, at all so far. It would happen if I tried to get him to stand on that ankle, um, you know, on one leg. So if I want to do one-legged poses, which I've not actually tried to do yet, it would have to be uh, over here. By the way, he also has outward <laughs> Super Van Dam uh, hip motion that I forgot to cover, and he can stand on one foot. Hooray! So uh, he doesn't have really any, like, dedicated forward and backward uh, ankle movement. Uh, he just has this transformation joint which lets his toe point. But he stands quite happily. Uh, he poses quite decently. Uh, I like messing with this dude. He's got a good silhouette in, and uh, a good kind of natural heroic curvature to his posture uh, when doing most things. Uh, Terra Aegis scratches the itch. 
I find I wish his legs could do a bit more, but then for the character I see in front of me, uh, I can't think of many poses that would use all those extra joints that are not just me screwing around and doing dumb stuff. But I like to do dumb stuff. You? Terra Aegis is a great piece of toy design with satisfying looks in both modes and a clever transformation scheme. It's the execution of the figure's production that lets things down in several spots, as many parts of the legs just don't feel as solid as I'd like them to be. Totally on par with several other experiences in the unofficial marketplace, to be sure, but I wanted Ocular Max to achieve the same brutally confident degree of tactile satisfaction that I get from most of Mastermind Creation's reformatted line. I really wanted to see the third major release in the series hit the hand-feel factor out of the park, but it remains on the same level of mass production level adequacy as Sphinx and Backdraft. Not poor experiences for me, just overshadowed by accompanying releases in the reformatted line. Which is a shame, because I quite enjoy the total package of this piece. The accessory implementation's fantastic, allowing for all kinds of different appearances depending on your personal taste. Articulation satisfies and looks natural with the pleasing inclusions of an ab crunch and lateral shoulder hinges. If all of that was wrapped in the cozy blanket of, for instance, a reformatted Spartan's confident construction, I'd have no complaints. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Evangelist, and if you're wondering where to get a toy-style Sphinx head for the brighter blue 01A release, stay tuned and get ready to go green.